and welcome to my channel. I am Crystal Ann Compton, and I am so excited to be with you today. I hope you had a wonderful Thanksgiving if you are in the States, and I hope you are in the process of having a wonderful holiday season wherever you are on the planet. I have got nothing but love for you. I wanted to pop up before my primary video to just introduce it because I had such a wonderful connection with this particular guest that I had on my Life Magnetics podcast, which, by the way, the link is in the description. We started this conversation talking about money consciousness. We really do have a consciousness and a subconscious around money and our beliefs about money and the lack thereof. And the interesting thing is that some of the beliefs that we presently house within ourselves these beliefs, which by the way, are currently manifesting our conditions, specifically around money, some of those beliefs are not our own. In fact, they were passed down from generations before. Like you're carrying beliefs potentially within you right now about money and success and health and wellness that were your great grandmothers or your grandmothers or your fathers or your great, 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 great uncles. They're showing up though in your current experience. And what Janet talks to us about is how to identify that you've got these particular beliefs, whether they're yours or whether they were uh, something that you inherited, and also how we can release these negative thoughts and ideas and begin to change our life so that we can begin to start attracting new cir circumstances. I really, really liked Janet. The link to connect with her, because I think you're going to want to is absolutely in the description of this YouTube. And I just really wanted to make it a point to share this conscious conversation with you. So without further ado, let's get into today's episode of Life Magnetics. I'd like to welcome Janet Elaine Schmidt to the Life Magnetics podcast. Janet is the creator of Reprogram for Success and for a decade has been a practical yet potent quantum consciousness accelerator, an integrative holistic facilitator, inspirational speaker, life coach, and so importantly, a light worker. Janet enables individuals and business teams to identify and remove energetic blocks or ailments caused by inherited imprints held in the subconscious for generations. So that sounds like epigenetics. It sounds like ancestral timelines, all the stuff we need to get into. Janet teaches you how to recognize your program and imprints, your blocks, your ailments, and provides tools to discard what no longer serves you so that you can have a healthy, prosperous, and wealthy life. Janet, that all sounds so amazing. We need you now more than ever. Welcome to the Life Magnetics Podcast. <laughs> oh, thank you. I'm very excited to be here with you. I have so many questions for you, um, but before we get into all of that, I kind of want to touch upon your life before your reprogramming, kind of what led you to the work that you're currently doing around money, prosperity, and just success generally. Okay. Well, I was, um, I grew up in Wyoming for the most part. And uh, when I was four years old, my grandfather died in front of me. Mm -hmm. And at that time, all of a sudden I saw angels and I saw him with the angels and I couldn't understand why everybody was crying because he was happy. He was going to heaven uh, or going, he seemed to go to heaven. And uh, I, so I couldn't figure it out. And by 10 years old, I was out in the fields putting the laying of hands, but I thought I was just putting love into the horses. I was standing out there putting love into these horses. And, you know, my parents they didn't, in particular, my mom, she didn't really want to talk about some of these things. And like, I would talk to my father and say, Hey, you know, do you believe that there are earth angels? And he, and he would say, well, I can't say there aren't. And then I'd say, do you think that there's spirits that, you know, float through? And I had something happen to me when I was 21 and I was talking to him about what I saw. And he said, I can't say you didn't see it because I've heard so many people talk about it. But then I went into the mainstream of life and I ended up getting married, shut everything down, ended up getting married. Um, and then uh, after about 20 years of marriage, I ended up getting a divorce. And my kids were pretty young. My uh, youngest was nine. And I think my oldest was 13. And so 
I'm sitting there now and I received a huge chunk of money. And I'm thinking now I can help the underserved, both individual and nonprofit alike. I mean, at the time I was chairman of the board of a nonprofit that helped homeless women get a better education so they could help their kids, right? And then I was also helping the inner city hospitals raise money. So I was natural for me to be in service of others because as a kid, I always, you know, protected the underdog. That was a big thing for me because I never could handle people being mean to each other. It was something that for me, I couldn't bear. Um, I still can't bear very well. Um, and so now I could give to individuals, and nonprofits like, and I did. And before long, people were attached to me for my money. Hmm. And I didn't know how to say no, I couldn't say no. So then, so before long, then I ended up in arbitration. You see, my financial advisor, who was with a internationally well-known firm today, uh, made an investment outside the scope of the firm, and I'm in arbitration, and he lost millions, and I'm sitting there going, I'm going to lose this money. I'm going to lose this money. And, you know, that's kind of the quantum physics of it, right? That's the energy part of it, because I'm putting that energy towards losing this money, but I also knew the statistics of arbitration. And so in the end, he he was disbarred. His partner was fine. The company was fine. And sure enough, I only got 10% of what I lost. Wow. So I'm sitting there going, okay, there has to be. So I, I sat down and I said, review your life. Mm -hmm. So I started reviewing my life. I also started reviewing techniques that could change my thought process. And so I started going into epigenetics, you know, checking into it. Well, you know, this goes into our money consciousness for everybody listening. I came from eight generations of ministers who signed up to be economically challenged, who signed up to give their last cents to the underserved and who had no money to manage. And I don't want to take that away from them. I really don't because being a minister is really a tough life and it, it's admirable but I didn't sign up for that in my lifetime. So this explained why, because we have like a money threshold. Mine was to give it all away. Mm -hmm. That's why I couldn't say no. So I was in search of finding how to change my subconscious and conscious mind. And so I studied near linguistic programming. I studied theta healing, psyche, EMI, which is eye movement integration or EMDR, hypnosis, you know, I just got DNA reengineering. I just, you know, like code, you mm -hmm. know, I just went down the list and I kept getting certified and everything because I wanted to know how to change this, not only for myself, but other people. But I knew if I could change this, there were other things in my life that I could change. And so I figured it out. If you use, if you use, NLP, near linguistic programming, or theta healing, go in the timeline, someone's timeline, change, like if it's fear, change it to safety, security, and confidence in every area, and even go into their ancestral line and change that as well, and make it safety, security, and confidence. And then you come in with psyche after it with a balance of safety, security, and confidence. You've now double locked down and you've brought their left cortex and their right cortex into a whole brain state. And now it's, it's tight in there. Okay. So I have a couple of, well, I have a question and a comment. My comment, my first comment is as a spiritual person, my thought would be that if your frequency at the time that you're so generous in giving is to enrich and edify others with like the purest of intentions, mm -hmm. wouldn't spirit or God return unto you according to your intention in your heart? That's kind of the basics of manifestation. And what I think I'm hearing you say is that your subconscious programming and these ancestral lines and what's been passed down generation upon generation is of sufficient enough signal to kind of knock your intention out of the way and take primacy, meaning you're now you're manifesting based on the signal that's in your subconscious, which I think is a, a wild concept to some people because they don't they don't necessarily uh, think about that. So that's the first thing I want you to talk about. But the second thing I want you to 
speak to that I think we really have to speak to is our current world. So someone can come mm -hmm. to you and you can do your NLP and you can do your, your different modalities, which sounds so fascinating. And I believe in this. And they can reach this whole state where they've reprogrammed themselves, but then they have to go outside into the world where we've currently got wars, we've got inflation, we've got gas prices, we've got um, economic downturn, you know, uh, recession in 20, all the things that are signaled to us and messaged to us that keep us in a state of fear and knock us off of our center. And I'm just wondering how somebody can maintain not like reprogram themselves with what the world is telling us once we get into a state of reprogramming. I know that's a mm -hmm. lot. Let's start with the first part, <laughs> which is the intention so the, and like manifesting based on your intention. Oh no, I, I totally get what you're talking about and manifesting in your intention. And this is what I would say. There are two parts to this for me. One part was that here I am out on my own and I'm going to make my road in being a giver to the underserved, right? So I'm making that my road. So, so your purpose of what you're telling me of the frequency was two part. It was to help people and it was to help myself at the same time because I had come out of this divorce and it was to create something. And in the end, it was just people taking from me. And so I would say that our subconscious mind and the imprinting that we carry, it's for generations. I mean, people don't, people need to understand that we are programmed for generations. And then it's passed to us from our parents from the time we're born to seven years old. After that, it's your friends, it's society and anything catastrophic that happens to you that dictates your reality. And so when you think about that, it can really take you down and understand like that imprinting of eight generations is huge. And it's, it's something that you really have to reprogram and really mm -hmm. look at. And it's difficult for a lot of people. Money and money consciousness is real. Yes, it is. And it's like, um, it's a hidden belief that you don't even know that you have, right. it's a hidden proclivity or inclination that you don't even know that you have or that you practice. And I, and I believe this is true. I think up until the age of seven, you know, science says that kids are kind of in a state of hypnagogia. They're in a trance. Yeah. They're just absorbing, they're in, absorbing, absorbing. They're in theta. Right. They're in right. Th theta the whole time. And you know, my mother used to say that money was the root of all evil. Right. Like rich people were not, wealthy people were passing great. down those curses. <laughs> Yeah. Right, right. So, so that gets ingrained in you as a, as a child, you know, mm -hmm. and, and ingrained in you as an adult, but I mean, you can, it, you can move it out. It's, it's also money consciousness can also come in this way. If your family, or if you were raised thinking a hundred dollars was a lot of money and let's say you manifest a thousand you're only going to hang on to the hundred because your consciousness can't handle the rest. It's kind of what happened to me. My consciousness couldn't, couldn't handle hanging on to it. It just kind of flowed through me. And, and it's funny because somebody once asked me, you know, I think before I got the money, I would say it was innocence about the money after I got the money. And I'm going to say this to, to people, it was ignorance because I had a duty to take care of the money and I had the ability, I had the funds now to find people to help me. I thought by having this financial advisor, he would do everything for me. No, 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 no. That's, that's not, yes, you need them, but you also have to be present and involved. Right. You're the steward over that money. Yes. Understood. So what, what do you say about the current conditions of our reality, which are ever signaling oh. us free uh, fear and lack and scarcity, and you're going to run out. And how does a centered person who's doing this work on themselves, like combat that incessant programming? Well, I truly do believe that, um, first of all, I'd say don't watch TV too much. Don't watch the news. Amen. I, I read the news. I'll read the headlines, right? So I know what's going on the big and if there's something big somebody else is going to call me or tell me but i do think that uh watching the news can really take you downtown down to a place that you just don't want to go 
Um, and you have to remember, my son once said that uh, the newscasters or the channels are just like ESPN. They play to their base. They play to their team. And so if you keep that in mind, they're, you know, it's going to be constantly duality. And so one of the things I focus on with my clients is to stay above duality, to make that your shift, mm. to be above duality. So you can see the prices, you can see what's going on, but because of your subconscious and conscious mind and your frequency that's changed, it will affect you. It won't affect you as much, it, very little. I mean, you'll kind of see what's like, I see what's going on and everything, but I'm grateful. I have a grateful frequency. I have gratitude. I um, I have a lot of love, a lot of compassion um, for everything and everyone. And when you can come from that place of gratitude, of love, of compassion, of thoughtfulness, mindfulness, uh, respect, it will lift you above all the stuff that's going on you will not feel it as much. And I'm not going to say you're not going to feel some things, but you will elevate yourself from what I call the dogma, the muck. Mm -hmm. Being immersed in it, the mm -hmm. Maya. <clears throat> yeah. Um, so that would be how somebody would rise above the duality then to get into that space or that chamber of compassion and love and gratitude. And I do think like every single day practicing gratitude, doing your mm -hmm. whole pono pono prayer and just doing the things that you can do to align your vibration or your frequency or your spirit with that which is higher than I. Like that is how you do that. Um, <clears throat> so let's talk about so maybe so maybe there's a lot of us out here who are walking around rocking these um, epigenetic patterns handed down yeah. by grandma, but we don't know it. Mm -mm. But are there signs or symptoms, things that might happen in our life that could tip us off to the fact that we're holding these patterns? If so, what are some of those signs? Um, there are signs. That's a great question, because there are. The first one is if you're repeating the same scenario, just different people. Mm. but you're having the same in outcome. So it's like the person who dates the same type of person over and over again, and it's right. the same person, it's the same outcome. You know, if I would have paid attention to the money issues, I would have, there were so many times that I say that God or my higher self was saying, hey, hey, they'd give me this situation. They give me this situation. I'm still not paying attention, right? And so then they dive me over the cliff they got my attention. And so it's paying attention to what's working and what's not. I always tell people, be the student of your life. I mean, have the courage to say, is that working? Is that not working? Go, go in your business sector or your work sector, right? What's working, what's not working. Go in your relationships, intimate and uh, social. What's working, what's not working. Go to yourself your personal self-esteem, your personal being, that's the hardest one. And what is working for you and what's not? What are your inner thoughts to yourself? And if you can be honest and start writing them down and start checking it out, you'll find out what is working for you, what's not, what needs to change. Yes. <laughs> and also... <laughs> check out what you're thinking to yourself about yeah. yourself and about everybody else. That's also going to tell you what you're, what you have inside of you. Well, I have a friend who had a situation where she found out she was going to come into a good chunk of money. And I was super excited for her. That was awesome. And she was telling me about it. And then like clockwork the next week, something in her house broke down. Yep. Like she had to change something out in her house she had to prepare her roof or something. And then her car broke down. Yep. And pretty soon the money she hadn't even received yet, she had just heard about potentially receiving, was already leaving. She mm -hmm. was already she was already losing money. And, and I think that is a sign, right? That you have some kind of an abundance ceiling that you've got inside of you. Yes, that's, that's an excellent example of mm -hmm. what I'm talking about. You can receive the money, but it's gonna be gone and you're only gonna keep that base amount of, of your level, of where your money consciousness level is at. Okay, help us 
break through the level? How can we <laughs> go from that hundred dollar ceiling to the next approachable or accessible level? Or like, how can we just break through all together? Is there a way to do that? There is a way to do that. And, and I would say to you, the, the way I approach it is I talk to someone basically and listen to the words because it kind of directs me to where the money consciousness comes from. But you can either go through near linguistic programming and do a timeline or theta healing and do a timeline and you'll find out exactly where in their life or if you believe in lives where it actually took place. And then you can sweep it out of every single spot up to present day and replace it with abundance. You know, I always use ultimate abundance because that means you have health, love, success, wealth, you have everything, but you can go through it all. And I like to go through the ancestral line too. And so now you're locking it in through using theta healing, right? I also come along and use, I have an another system of kind of a light code system that comes in and has you drop everything else that doesn't serve you at the same time. And then I top it off with Psyche. So I double lock it down. And what Psyche does is it crosses your left cortex with your right cortex and brings you into a whole brain state on the new belief of, I have an ultimate uh, abundance mindset or whatever the balance is. And I designed those with the client. But once you set that in and you can even tear it down to where the abundance is coming from or how you want to approach it um, and put in like five or six um, uh, balances, that's what they're called. And you're literally reprogramming your left cortex and your right cortex. You're in a whole brain state. So your subconscious conscious mind are there. So I always say it's double locked in. And for those who aren't familiar with Psyche, it came around about 30 years ago. Um, there's only 35 teachers in the whole world. Um, and if you're familiar with Dr. Bruce Lipton, in the back of his book, The Biology of Belief, he writes that Psyche is the reason why he finished that writing that book and why he has great relationships today. He goes further to say that it is the fastest, most efficient way to change a self-limiting belief into a self-enhancing one. And that's why I use it on the backside of, you know, moving out the old belief. But in Psyche, they don't necessarily believe that you have to move out the old belief and bring in the new. They just believe you put in the new belief. And the energy of that is sufficient to kind of move out the, the stuff. Yeah. Yeah, the frequency. And the minute you take the first step towards that, like, like, let's say ultimate abundance, the minute you take even the first step, and let's say you wanted to get your name out there. And so you sign up for one podcast, the minute you take that one step, you've, you've completely locked it in. Well, let me ask you after you take the steps to become conscious to what your subconscious how your subconscious has been programmed and then take the necessary steps to reprogram yourself about how long does it take for your clients for example about how long does it take for them to sense a shift in their experience maybe their mindset or actually for some money to start coming in i know we're talking about money but this has broader applications but like what could somebody expect well i'll use an example of one uh young lady i had she came to me and she goes you know what I have great relationships. I have this, I have that, but you know what? My abundance meter, I have three companies and they're not doing well. So I know I have a ceiling somewhere. So can we just do it on that? So she came to me and we focused a hundred. My sessions are usually a double session. They're 110 minutes long. So she came to me and we worked solely on that. And uh, I didn't hear from her. I, I have my clients always text me or write me and tell me how they're doing so that I know my metrics. And uh, so I emailed her after a month and I said, what's going on? She goes, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. This has been the most abundant month ever. Oh my gosh. Okay. So, so she, she was on her way, you know, no. I've, go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, go ahead. <laughs> No, no, I mean, I've had other clients who've come to me for other things. I had a young lady come to me and as we did one of the balances, her voice changed an octave 
and we knew it locked in. It was, we both looked at each other like, whoa. I had another client who had tremendous fear, tremendous fear, and that's common. Um, and we moved it to sa um, safety, security, and confidence, right? And when we moved it all out of her timelines into present day and through present day to the future, she was, it, it scared her a little bit because it, it was like this huge release was gone. And now she didn't have that feeling anymore. And she literally sat back because she could not, she's like, I feel so different. So it's different for different people. So some people have that. I have other people that it might be a week, mm -hmm. but it will kick in. I mean, a, a month would be long. Okay. Wow. A month okay. would be long for you, for you to not start seeing things. I already know people are going to want uh, to go to your website and, and check you out and we'll <laughs> give them the information and that all is in the description as well. Um, so as I just said, this sounds like it has broader applications. We're speaking in the context of prosperity and money, <clears throat> but like I've met people, for example, who, and I, I don't mean to uh, trigger warning, like just abuse, for example, mm -hmm. grew up abused, mm -hmm. um, left their home, found a partner, was abused, left that mm -hmm. relationship, found some other relationship, maybe even in their job, they are abused. They just continue to carry forward this mm -hmm. abuse. Um, and my mother, for example, my mother, since the time that I was a child, so Theta and beyond, was always telling me that the women in, in my, my maternal line die early. I don't know why oh, wow. a mother would say that to her child. And yeah. indeed, she, she lived until 68. So it was longer than she said women normally live. But I feel like she carried that from her mother who carried that from her mother. She put that into me just in my DNA, but also through speaking it into me. So I can right. just see how people are carrying all kinds of different things around. And so what you're talking about doing, you can get to all of these types of things. There's success on every level. Success on every level. I listen. Uh, when the client comes to me, I always say, how can I assist you? And I listen to their words. I watch their mannerisms. I watch everything to see what is the first thing, the most important thing that we need to address first. And then we work. It's like, it's like peeling back an onion. We keep working on um, like the one young lady, it was only abundance. But for a lot of people, it's, it's like you said, abuse. Mm -hmm. I, and I, I will say this to the listeners too. 95% of everything that somebody comes to me with, I've already lived through. Isn't that amazing? And I, I just have to say that even to women losing babies, even to abuse, I mean, I have abandonment. I've lived through so much. Um, so I can understand it on an emotional, I'm, I have tremendous empathy and so I can get down to the core of what's happening with the person. And I, I'm really grateful for, you know, I, I know it sounds strange to say, but I'm grateful for everything I've gone through because it was a tremendous teacher and it allowed me to service people in, in a better way. I relate to that so much. And um, I just find that to be so true. I don't think you have to have gone through a whole host of hard and challenging experiences to be a potent healer. But I do find that the most powerful potent healers have been through so much. And I also think going through things, especially things like trauma, abuse, you, you develop this facility to hear it in the languaging of other people. Like, oh, I can tell just by the way that person speaks that they've been abused or they're going through something. You you do develop a, a vision for it as mm -hmm. well. It, you just are able to sense it intuitively in other people. And so I think, and we always attract what we are, even as yes. healers, right? Yes. We always attract what we are. And so of course you're going to find clients who have been through the things that you've been through. And do you find on that note that when you're bringing through what I would call kind of a healing, we could say clearing, whatever you call it, but kind of a healing, do you also receive up levelings and benefits and downloads through doing this work? Oh, that's an interesting, nobody's ever asked me that question. So thank you. You're welcome. Um, 
you know, I'm always honored to assist. And so it depends on um, really the person who's in front of me and what techniques I use. Because if you go to my website, I, I have probably 12 different techniques and I can use them all. And so when I'm actually clearing someone's body energetically, because I do clear the chakras. And so when we're clearing the body energetically and all of that, yeah, it's like, a, I have to say, it's like a little bit of a light show for me. And I feel the energy too, because it's from the divine. It's, it's pure energy that's flowing through both of us. And so that's, it's a beautiful thing, but I, it just gives me, um, great joy. And maybe that's what I get from it too. It gives me great joy to actually see, especially if I'm in it and I see the seismic shift go right then it, it just gives me great joy. So I guess I get that from it too, is that I'm, I'm really joy filled. Hmm, that's beautiful. Now in reading up on you, um, there, I came across, what is it? Oh, quantum and golden codes. Can oh, you yes. talk about those? Those sound very interesting. I love them. <laughs> I actually have my, my quantum code book right here. Oh, all right. Um, quantum codes and the, the golden codes of Shambhala, um, which I really love. Um, they've been around, I think for, uh, 20 years. Um, the um the Grabovoi codes, which are um the quantum codes, they've been around, I wanna say for maybe 30 years, maybe 40. Um, he was an engineer and he had figured out that um that numbers have frequency. And if you think about it, this is so true because words have frequency. They've proven that scientifically that love has a higher frequency than hate. So, so do these numbers, they have frequency. And so a cer certain combinations like 520, 520, 7418 is for unexpected money. Now I put that to the test. Okay. I put that to the test. I really did. So you have to space it. So it's 520, 741, 8. And you say each number separately. You don't say them together. Um, and I tried it and all of a sudden I got, I got these notices of this lawsuit. I didn't even know I was part of, I had no idea. And I got a check in the mail. I got it twice. So I was like, wow, that's pretty cool. So what did you do? You just recited it and do you do it with intentionality? I, Are you meditating? Are you fire what dancing? I, <laughs> what I, what I do is I try to visualize in my third eye or in my mind, for those of you who don't, you know, use the third eye or anything. And I just try to visualize that number in my head and then what that would feel like. What does it feel like to have unexpected money? And and I actually visualized it coming in my mailbox. That's what's so funny is cool. that I actually was like, oh, that unexpected money, that feels so great. It's coming in my mailbox. I know it's coming, you know, or, or, um, I see the person writing the check, you know, I see a person writing the check. So I, I first tried it out then, then, um, I thought I, I saw somebody talk about these codes and using them in paintings and that mm. you could put them on a canvas, right. And then paint over it. But the intention, the paint would take the intentions Ooh. of the numbers and you look at it. Now I thought I'm going to put that to the test, right? So I bought a bunch of oil paint. I coated this whole canvas of abundance and uh, prosperity codes from a different, I, I did both the grab boy codes. I did the codes of Shambhala. I did uh, I, I, uh, the sacred codes. I did all of those codes on the frequency of prosperity and abundance and money. So I finished the painting and my older daughter says, wow, I love that painting. I want that painting. And I'm like, really? And she goes, I love that painting. I want that painting. And I said, well, I'm going to keep it for a while. But I said, I'm doing some other ones. Then a client came in and she goes, oh my gosh. I said, what does that look like to you? She goes, you know, that's 
that's the vortex in Mount Shasta. That's that's the prosperity vortex. Now oh, she knew wow. nothing what was on it. Nothing. I had another painting that I put all um it had like stem cell regeneration. It was more like done on health, but redoing your stem cells, that kind of thing. And I had somebody look at it and they were like, wow, I feel my body changing. Yeah. So, wow. it, do so it does work. And, um, and I did a smaller one on stem cell and uh, that was for my daughter too. And she looked at it. It was a sample. And she goes, I love that. She goes, that's on my cells rejuvenating, isn't it? And I never told her anything. And I was like, yes, it is. And so I put the codes, I do it for some of my clients. And so I'll put the codes on the back. So they know what the codes are on the back of the canvas, but it's pretty powerful. I, I have one on healing trauma too. Mm -hmm. And uh, somebody just came to my house and I had it, I, it's not finished. And I had it sitting out there and she goes, wow. She said, that's really affecting my emotions and my brain. And I was, and I said, did you have trauma in your life? And she said, yes. And I was like, yes, it worked. It worked. Wow. So I would say to people, check into these codes. They do work. I'm, I'm now looking into water bending. Um, it's, it's how we can code water. I can't remember who the, um, the gentleman was. He wrote a book. I think he was from Japan. He wrote a book about how you know how the molecules change mm -hmm, with the mm -hmm. vibration well i've always put a post-it with love underneath my glass so when my glass sits there the water soaks up love but there's also you can also put these codes on posters on the inside so they face into the water mm. and they call this water bending and uh and so there's a lot of other things that go with this because you purify the water and everything but um that's working out pretty well. I've only been on it for a week. <laughs> wow. So can you show us the book again so I can have a look at that book? What's it? Okay. I'm going to, let me, uh, I have to write it down. <laughs> I'm taking so many notes. Okay. Thank you so much. You're welcome. It's a, it's a great, I was trying to see if I had, oh, my book of the golden codes of Shambhala is over there. I really like that one um, because they have a prayer in it. It was written by a gentleman in Greece um, and they have a prayer in it that calls upon all the angels and the great teachers of the highest light um, while you're going through the process to be cleansed and everything before you put all these codes in you. Well, I'm immediately going to buy it. <laughs> Thank you. I just You're love welcome. it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, okay. So I wrote, I wrote a few notes. Um, is there, I have, I have a question that might be a little esoteric because I'm of the opinion that anything that physicalizes in the body as a symptom or whatever must first be created in the energy, mm -hmm. right? And then the energy is kind of worked in and then it becomes a sim sim symptom. So with limiting beliefs, for example, around money or around trauma, do you find in your practice that there is a correlating physical space, place, pain, symptom, typically commonly associated with the work that you're doing? Like is somebody having a hip problem and they think maybe they've got a bad hip, but really they've got a problem with lack? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I do. Um, well, I can honestly say that most of the people that I know that have had cancer um, it's because they have extreme judgment and hate. they've, they have in their past had extreme judgment and hate in their life. Okay. Um, it's, it's been a constant, I, I know somebody who said to me, I know I got this because of the way I was always judging people and, and angry. They're angry. They're, they're carrying like three or four of these very heavy, heavy things. I also think that I, I can't say that there's a correlation. I will say this abuse people mm -hmm. usually are stuck right here. Yeah. Yeah. Abu abuse people. Um, and matter of fact, uh, the girl whose voice changed an octave. Yes. Um, when she first came in, my throat started closing up. It started closing, closing, closing. Cause I can feel what somebody has gone through. And so my throat started closing up 
And I had to stop. I said, did you grow up with abuse? What happened? Because my throat is closing up and I know that's the feeling. And she said, oh yeah, my dad held me by my throat. And so I was like, okay, so now, so then it could release. Um, but she's the one who released all that because her voice changed an octave. I mean, it was pretty amazing and it was instant release. Right. She was, she was ready to let it go and move on. Um, but I can't say that there's any, aside from this, cause this is the main one for mm -hmm. abuse. Aside from that, I usually can go into when somebody comes to me with an ailment and usually kind of go into the feeling of the place and I can feel what it's about. I, 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 I was gifted that I, I became a Reiki master probably well over 20 years ago, right? Right when I got divorced, I became a Reiki master. And I realized that I could kind of track in somebody's body, like what it was. I didn't have to touch anybody. I, what? Go ahead. No, <laughs> I no, no. I, I was told, I was told, um, spirit told me a long time ago that not to, that I didn't have to do that, that I could just like, I just scan all the way down. Yeah. And that's also kind of where I was going to go because it's, um, I know that you've trained in all of these modalities and, um, you're highly educated in these, but there just seems to be such an intuitive component to what you do. Um, and I'm wondering whether you have guides, do you work with guides, angels, do you have experiences where you're with people and are you also receiving messages? Like mm -hmm. what's, what is your process like? Well, the first thing I do, and yes, I, I channeled the galactic, the galactic angelic council. It's usually three angels, but a lot of times, depending on the person, I could get a whole chorus and, uh, and they channel through me. So I could say, what is it that Josie needs to know today? And they just, my hand just writes, they just tell me, and I don't do it until about 15 minutes before the person comes. And I'll write it all down. Now, if it's a linear person, I won't read it, but it gives me information. But if it's someone more on a spiritual path, I'll read to them after, after about five minutes of them talking or 10 minutes, they've hit on what the message is and I'll read it to them. And mm -hmm. they're just shocked. And some, sometimes I'll say, really, you want me to say that? And and sure enough, the person will be talking about what they're talking about. And so I never second guess what they, what they're channeling to me. And I feel that my work, even though I'm certified in so many things, I feel that it's the work of the divine working through me. It's not me. I'm the conduit. And so, yes, I'm educated in these things, but it's really, I'm the conduit for infinite pure light to flow through to other people. So when someone books a session with you, I mean, it could go in all kinds of directions using all of the gifts, talents, and tools that you have. It's really spirit yes. there. I get it's it. It's really spirit. There. Yeah. I do where, where I'm directed. If it's a linear person, I stay only over here. If mm -hmm. it's somebody else, I go like this. It, right. I mean, I do what I'm, I'm there as the tool. The instrument. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I do have, um, I do know my audience and I think is there, okay. So maybe somebody becomes conscious, like, whoa, the way that I'm speaking is really, um, negative. And I'm, I'm saying the filthy rich or the 1% or I, I can see the separation between myself and abundance and I'm becoming conscious to it. Are there little things, tips, tricks that people can do in a moment to clear a pattern that they become aware of? I don't know, tapping, breathing, anything that you have as a resource people could try. Well, I have two things. Okay. One one thing is, uh, I think this was a quote by Joseph, maybe Joseph Murphy or Neville Goodard, but this is something that I give my clients. Oh my gosh. So so quote this, isn't it wonderful? Something marvelous is happening to me right now. Goddard. The, yeah. The minute, the minute you feel something negative, whether you're talking negative to yourself, whether you're talking negative to the world, I don't care what it is. The minute you catch yourself, you say, isn't it wonderful? Something marvelous is happening to me right now. Because when you say that, you can't help but smile. I mean, you can't. And when I first started using that, I used it so much in the day that in the middle of the night, I was waking up saying it to myself. 
So I must have been having dreams that I needed to say it or something <laughs> because I woke up saying it. So that's number one. And the other thing is, if you have so many thoughts, and I say this, so many thoughts going through your head, I'm going to have you, try, are you game to try something sure. for 90, yes. 90, 90 seconds? Yes. Okay. So for 90 seconds, this is all it takes. So this is called the one point. It is what the samurais used prior to going into battle because they'd have all these thoughts going in their head. And so they'd be top heavy. And so easier to knock off the horse. So to center themselves, hmm. they would move the thoughts down to two inches below their navel, which is the hara point. And then they flow it from that point down into their legs. So we're going to do that. Okay. So I'm going to ask you to take a deep breath in. And as you exhale, close down your eyes. And now I want you to gather all the thoughts and all the emotions into your head, you know, in your mind, got them all there. And now we're going to take them down to two inches below our navel, down, 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 just let them flow down to two inches below your navel. And from that part point, see a bright light. And from that bright light, see the light flow down your legs to the ground, to the center of the earth. And just flow it all down to the earth, to the center. Just let it flow. And now you can open your eyes. Hmm. I felt the energy go down my legs. Mm -hmm. It's it's it clears your mind. Yeah. It centers you. It's a 90 seconds. Anybody can do it. All you have to do is focus. Okay, I've got them all there. Now they're flowing down to two inches below my navel. Now I see that bright light and I'm flowing it to the ground, to the center of the earth. And it can be as fast as 90 seconds. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. I felt that. Yeah, it's really it's really helpful if you've got so much so much clutter and if you're thinking a lot of negative thoughts, you can bring them all there, flow them down, mm -hmm. just flush them out. And it works with anxiety, I would imagine. Like when you're in an anxious state, you can do that mm -hmm. as well. Yeah, I call it an emotional resilience tool. Okay. Because you bring your emotions back, you can gather yourself, you can clear it out, you can just take that. And a lot of my, uh, a lot of the entrepreneurs and CEOs use those because you can do it almost while you're in a meeting. You can just like visualize it all mm -hmm. happening. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much. I love you're little welcome. tools like that, that are utilizable, that they're not so esoteric and hard to grasp, but you can't ever do them. Like that's easy. We can all do that. Right. So Janet, this has been such a fantastic conversation. I personally have learned so much. I'm um, I'm interested in checking you out and working with you. Do you work one-on-one -on -one with clients? Uh, do you teach workshops? And if so, like how would somebody be able to get in touch with you? Well, you can get in touch with me by going to uh, JanetElaineSchmidt.com. That's my website. I have different packages there. I do workshops. I personalize them for the company or the group that I'm going to. So you can inquire about that. Um, but I would offer anybody who's listening to this podcast, 25% off any package they wish to uh, purchase. So awesome. So do they just mention that they heard you on life magnetics? Yes. That's cool. all they have to do is mention that. Um, they can um, email my, uh, it's A-S-S-T at JanetElaineSchmidt.com and just mention that and they'll get the discount. Okay. And I've got the link in the podcast description. I've also got the link in the YouTube description. If you're watching this on video, definitely recommend that you check out Janet. I'm just amazed by our conversation. It's been so fantastic. Thank you so very much. Oh, it was my pleasure. It's always yes. my pleasure to share what I know. Oh, and let's stay connected. I hope we can. Oh, I would love that. Thank you.